A really important function of troubleshooting a machine is tracing, and SysMac Studio has an excellent tracing function. I'd like to go through some of these features that can really make the tracing tool extra powerful. Uh, first thing that we're gonna need to do is set up a trace itself. And so what I've done is I created a camming program just with a two axes running a cam profile, and I will trace the um, commanded position for both of these axes. So I'll take MC axis triple zero, uh, commanded position, and then I'll do the same thing for uh, the second axis, cmd.pause for commanded position. Um, and then up at the top, I can decide how I want to actually set up this trace. So I'm just gonna do a single trace. And for sampling interval, you can set this to a variety of settings, but I'm just gonna use every period of task. We're on a one millisecond task on this particular example. Um, and then for number of samplings, you can set that uh, up to 10,000. And uh, just to show you, 10,000. Um, and that basically tells you the number of samplings you have times your sampling period, that is gonna be the total length of your trace. So you just wanna make sure that that is a long enough time to capture what it is that you're looking to capture. Um, the other thing you can do is configure this post trigger data ratio. And what this does is it says that when you hit a trigger event, how much data does the happens after the trigger versus how much of the data in the trace is prior to the trigger. And so why that's helpful is because if you want to see things that are happening before the event occurs, so if you're looking for some fault condition or you're looking for where an axis is at or something of that sort, uh, you can look a little bit prior to when the event occurs. In fact, you could actually make the entire event uh, or the entire trace before the actual event if you wanted to see what was leading to uh, a situation. But I'm just gonna go ahead and set this for 90%. So 10% of the trace is prior to the event and then 90% of the trace is after the event. And then the other thing I did is um, I've got this in an enable trigger condition. So what I'm looking at is I have a function block for my cam in and I'm just gonna look at the in cam status bit of when that goes to true and use that as my trigger. So click start trace and that basically arms the trace now waiting for the trigger event. And then down here in the watch window I have the command bits for executing that. So I'll hit uh, command cam in, and you can see the command position for my slave axis ran through its cycle, and we'll give it a second here. And now we have our trace. So up at the top, there are a number of these icons in this icon bar that allow you to kind of customize and do what you want with the trace. And I just want to hit a couple of these. Um, one thing you can do is you can toggle the layout, whether you want it side by side or over top of one another. If you do it side by side, it is kind of nice because you can actually drag and extend this over. So uh, depending on how much data you want to see over in the table of your trace uh, traces over on the left, you can narrow that down fairly small. Um, another really cool feature in uh, here is the ability to do what we call independent Y-axis mode. So click on that icon, and now what it does is it takes all of your analog traces and it basically scales them that, so that they all appear to be the same height. So for instance, I'm gonna shut this off, and what I have here is I have a commanded, or my uh, the green trace is the commanded position of my axis zero. And that's just running from zero to 360 degrees. The orange trace here is my axis one, and that's only running between zero and 180 degrees. So if you wanna be able to kind of have everything uh, zoomed in a little bit and scaled so that you can see things the best, if you click on that, um, independent y-axis mode icon, it'll actually take and stretch all of your traces to be the same height. So it's just kind of a nice feature for um, <clears throat> being able to look and, and monitor what you've got there. Another really nice thing about this is the y-axis color actually provides you the color of the trace that the scaling is showing. So for instance here, because the y-axis is green, we know that that's the scaling for the green trace here. Then if I click on MC axis one, that trace over here on the left, 
Now the Y axis changes to orange, and that tells me now that the data I'm seeing uh, or the scaling that I'm seeing on the Y axis matches with uh, this particular trace. So it's a nice thing to be able to toggle back and forth and see things kind of stretched out a little better. Speaking of stretched out, uh, you can use some icons in here to zoom in and zoom out. And when you do that, it's going to basically zoom in to the center of the screen, or you can also um, use your mouse wheel to just mouse over where you want to be. You can click on the trace and using your mouse, you can drag it around and then you can zoom in to something if you want to really narrow in. And it's going to zoom in based off of where your mouse is uh, pointed. And then once you really mess up what you've got shown, you just click zoom to fit and it's going to reset what you have. You can do the same thing with toolbars down at the bottom on the axis. So if we look at the axis, uh, the x-axis down here, if I click on it, I can then drag and drop and it's just going to slide everything forward or backwards. Same on the y-axis, I can shift it up and down and I can see things that way. Also what you can do is if you click on the axis and then hit your mouse wheel, you can zoom in just based off of the axis of interest. So that's the x-axis and I can do the same thing with the y-axis and I can uh, stretch and scale so I can see things that I might want to see that way. Um, another nice feature is you can turn on your cursors and I can then drag this cursor and I can see where things are at. I can also put on a second cursor and then I can drag that and then I get to see two pieces of data uh, at the same time so that it just makes it a little bit more uh, interesting. So I've got, uh, I've got two bars here that I can see. And then if I wanted to, for some reason, fix that, there's an icon for make range cursor fixed width. And then once I do that and I grab this, I just slide this back and forth as a window. So if I wanted to check anything more in detail, I could do that. Um, Another cool little feature here is you have um, an offset. You have an x-axis offset and a y offset. So because we're in the independent y-axis mode, the y offset, y offset is disabled. But if I click on that, and then what I can do is I can actually start shifting the graphs so that if I want something to you know, be able to line up better and in a different trace, I could do that. So I could shift this by 500 and you could see that the uh, that the orange trace shifts by a certain amount. And I can do the same thing going vertically. I could shift this up 50 or shift this up 180. So there's a couple different things you can do to adjust and have that um, appear how you want it to appear. So I think those are kind of the, the key things that really help uh, in terms of being able to narrow in and, and trace what you want to see and then be able to zoom in and, and get a little bit better idea of what it is that you're looking at. So just those are the kind of tools that I think um, if you can make use of them when you're doing um, events, that's a huge thing. And actually one last thing too is up here on the top, you can uh, enable or disable the Boolean chart. So if you have Boolean variables uh, that you're tracking, you can have them appear on another chart or you can actually mix both of them. So for instance, let me go ahead and I'll put in uh, command cam in, and then we'll do another one for uh, function uh, program zero function block. Let's do slave cam in dot in sync. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and I'll start the trace. And I'll hit the cam in function to get it to run. I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop because it's already run the complete cycle that it needs to run. Um, and then I can turn on these. This is my analog variables. These are my Boolean variables. And then if I clicked on both of them, I can overlay the two on top of each other and actually see what's going on. And the colors here are pretty atrocious. So if you just click on the color um, and reset it, that's gonna provide a little bit more uh, visual differentiation between what we've got shown here, okay? So that is the tracing function in a nutshell for how to do some of the basics with it.